Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to look about a new concept. Most of them would have been aware of it and most of them would have not been. Okay, now today we shall look about this and trust me once you watch this video you are not going to get any doubts regarding the critical probing depth. Okay, so I hope everybody is reading and uh, don't you know think too much about the pandemic which is going outside. Just go, uh, do your process stick to your timetable and uh, now uh, don't expect things to be postponed and uh, it will happen when it should okay so keep reading and never you know um, uh, say a reason that you know you you were waiting for some uh, postponement okay that is not going to happen and that has not happened till now so assume your exams are going to be you know uh, as same as the previous year and start reading because you have every competition in front of you okay now uh, see the critical probing depth okay so critical probing depth is self-explanatory so there is going to be some probing depth value and they are adding a, a word before that critical right okay let me put it in a very simple way I'll tell you a scenario okay a patient comes to your clinic okay uh, complaining of some periodontal symptoms and you are asking the patient to sit and you are measuring the PPD. Okay. So the probing depth was around 5 to 6 mm. Okay. And now uh, the clinical attachment level that is from the CEG to the base of the sulcus is assumed to be, say, for example, 3 to 4 mm. Okay. You are you have measured this and you are planning to do the treatment okay whatever it may be now that is where you have to be very careful you are going to do you you have decided that you are going to do scaling you are going to do scaling and root planing and in case in case if needed you are going to do flap surgery okay now uh, what determines you know uh, whether you should do scaling alone or whether you should do the scaling and root planing or whether you should go for surgery flap surgeries what determines that that is what we call as the critical probing depth see very simple critical probing depth okay put a pen stop critical probing depth just listen to whatever I say critical probing depth is a baseline probing depth below which you are going to get clinical attachment loss and above which you are going to get clinical attachment gain. So if I do a therapy which is less than that of the critical probing depth, then I'm going to get a clinical attachment loss, which means the outcome of the treatment is not going to be good. If I do a treatment which is above that of critical probing depth, then I'm going to get a good result. There is nothing but the clinical attachment gain. Okay, let me put it in another way. Say for example, X, X is your critical probing depth. So by definition, if you do something above the CPD, critical probing depth, you are going to get clinical attachment gain. So if, if for example, if you're doing scaling and if this is the CPD critical probing depth for scaling and root planing, okay. And uh, if it is more than what is your assumed CPD is, yes, then you are going to get clinical attachment gain. At the same time, if your critical probing depth is less, it's, but still you are doing a scaling and root planing, which actually is not needed, then that is going to result in clinical attachment loss. Right. Okay. Now, what is this X? That is what we are going to look now. Okay. And this picture will tell you everything. Okay. Don't worry. It is going to be very easy. So say, for example, this is your attachment level. Okay, and uh, this is going to be the initial probing depth. Okay, now <clears throat> I'm going to fix CPD. That is, CPD means cri critical probing depth. Now I'm going to assign CPD for three, for three procedures. First one is this orange line what you see here. This is for scaling and root planing. This green line what you're seeing here is your modified Widman flap. Okay. And I'll tell you another value later uh, in this video. So why this modified Whitman flap is 
you know this critical probing depth was given by linde okay by linde in the year 1982 can be a potential mcq so during those times the modified wittmann flap they are they were practiced more often that is why you know they consider modified wittmann flap you know as as the most common flap surgery okay now the value for critical probing depth in case of an srp is 2.9 with variations of 0.3 okay now now if a patient comes to you you are measuring the probing depth if it is more than 2.9 if it is more than 2.9 if you do scaling and root planing for that patient what is going to result that is going to result in clinical attachment gain as you can see here it goes up right so this upper portion this upper portion is the clinical attachment gain and this lower portion okay this lower portion is the clinical attachment loss okay so if your critical probing depth that is this value this is what i'm talking about this value this is the critical probing depth for srp so the critical probing depth for srp is 2.9 so if a patient comes to you with a probing depth of say 4 mm you are doing srp that is going to result in clinical attachment gain if it is less than 2.9 and you are doing scaling and root planing as you can see here the orange it goes down is going to be clinical attachment loss it fulfills the definition now coming to modified wittmann flap what is the critical probing depth of modified wittmann flap it is 4.2 plus or minus 0.2 every every number in this video can be a potential mcq every number so the critical probing depth for srp is 2.9 with variations of 0.3 and modified wittmann flap is going to be 4.2 plus or minus 0.2 and the point where these srp and the scaling and uh, the modified wittmann flap meets this is for generally for any flap surgery so this critical probing depth is 5.4 mm so for flap surgery so if a patient comes to you with a probing depth of say for example 6 mm definitely is a candidate for a flap surgery more than 5.4 mm sorry so more than 5.4 mm more than 5.4 mm definitely the patient goes for flap surgery if the patient comes to you with a critical probing depth of uh, say for example 4 mm you can definitely do srp but you cannot do a flap surgery because the critical probing depth of a flap surgery is 5.4 in general especially for a modified wittmann flap it is 4.2 because those times the modified wittmann flap were practiced more right so this is the concept of critical probing depth it might be a little bit tricky but if, if you watch it again definitely it is very easy very easy if a particular value i am i'm going to assign a particular value if i'm going to do the treatment above that the treatment is going to be good if i'm going to do the treatment below the value then that is going to be a clinical attachment loss it is as simple as that okay so uh, we will uh, uh, i will uh, post videos uh, 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 like small concepts you know uh, regarding periodontics at least two to three times a week Uh, not more than five to six minutes, so that you know it will be very easy for you to revise uh, or uh, or to see whenever you are free or whenever you are trying to relax. So get these concepts in your mind and read and uh, retain and revise. So revision is very important. So keep reading, uh, keep away your distractions, follow your timetable, and uh, yes, if you find this video helpful, um, do share with your friends. Thank you for watching this video. We'll meet in another video. Thank you.